We see average Japanese salary man who works all day and has no social life to speak of. He continues his monotonous and draining routine until one day he eventually has a heart attack from how unfulfilling his life truly is. He later opens his eyes to find himself in an old-looking hospital with a woman standing over him. She remarks that he has quite the gentle face for someone who is related to his father, but he is still unable to make sense of what is going on yet. A maid enters the room and offers the woman some tea, which is when he is finally able to get a look at himself in the reflection of the tray she is holding. He has been reincarnated as a baby named Ars Leuven, and by the time three years have passed, he has already begun to make the best of his new life here. He has mastered how to read and write the language here, and has also become fairly knowledgeable about this world as well. He was born in the Summerforth Empire, which rules over the Summerforth continent, and since has never seen a map like this before, he concludes that wherever he is now is definitely not Earth. He was fortunate enough to be born into a family of nobility called the Leuvens, and that comes with the perks of having a giant house, made to look after him, and a personal chef. There is also one other thing he got when he reincarnated as he discovered that he has an ability that no one else has ever had. He goes into the training room for the guards and asks if he can watch them while they practice. They all like ours, so they see no reason not to let him watch, although it's a little strange that a three-year-old is so interested in seeing them fight. As he walks around, he notices one guard who is struggling to use a spear, so he sees this as the perfect opportunity to use his special ability. Appraisal with this ability, he is able to see all the stats of the guard named Milias. And although this cavalry stat is only at D, he has an archery stat which is at B, so Ars can tell that he would be much better suited to take up the role of an archer. After Milias loses his match, Ars goes up to him and asks if he has ever considered using a bow to fight his battles instead. Milias thinks bows are for cowards who enjoy being safe while they attack, so if you would never be caught using a weapon like that, but Ars insists that he thinks Milias would be a really good archer if he tried it out. He wouldn't normally agree to something like this, but since it's Ars that is asking, he caves and decides to try it out at least once. He's never shot a bow before, so he's not very confident with his chances of hitting the target, but Ars assures him that he'll be fine, so he stands in place and draws his bow to fire. The first shot is a bullseye and Milias can hardly believe what he just managed to pull off. To make sure it wasn't a fluke, he fires several more shots at the target and each land in the center, with one even managing to split another arrow. After seeing what Milius can do with a bow, all the other guards tell him he should switch to be an archer like Ars had said because he sucks at using a spear anyway. But they still have questions about how Ars was able to tell that Milius would be talented with a bow. There's not much he can say to explain his ability, so he just calls it instinct rather than explaining that he can see people's stats. He is confident in the accuracy of his ability after testing it out, but for some reason, he is unable to use it on himself. At dinner, Ars was getting ready to eat dinner when his father asked him if he had really discovered Milius's talent for archery. His father is Raven Luvens, and he has a resting grumpy face, so he always looks a little angry, even when he isn't. Ars thinks he is an amazing man since he was able to rise from the level of a farmer to nobility with his martial prowess alone. He is so powerful that he is able to take down 10 men all by himself if he needs to. He tells Ars to hone this instinct for finding other people's talent since he will one day take over as the lord of this land and when he does, the ability to discern the talents of the people around him will be incredibly valuable. He gives his plate of food to Ars as a kind gesture, telling him that he wants Ars to grow up fast. Ever since that day, Ars has spent a lot of time reading up on the Empire, and that led him to realize that he is gonna be screwed if he doesn't change things soon. The rulers of Summerforth are corrupt, and because of this, the peasants are revolting all over the kingdom. If things go on like this, the Empire may fall, leading to widespread wars, and as the future lord of this place, he will be required to lead his men into battle, but he doesn't have the confidence to say that he could be successful in a war. He decides that he needs to prepare himself for such a disaster by gathering talented people to help him when that day comes. He heads out into the streets of the city and begins using appraisal to scan the people for anyone who has some kind of talent. However, even after searching for a long time and wearing out his eyes in the process, he still hasn't found anyone useful yet. Just then, he sees a kid being kicked out of a store and refused service by an old lady. Everyone sees this happen, but they are all racist as well, so they don't want to bother helping a Malkin. Malkin are people who came to Summerforth from across the sea, and they are usually brought in as slaves, so people think low of them. Ars isn't going to just watch him be ostracized by the people, so he walks up to him and offers a loaf of bread, which he had on hand. The boy is hesitant at first, 
But he accepts the bread and ours then uses appraisal on him, which leads him to discover that Reitz is stacked when it comes to stats. His stats are on par with some of the greatest people in the world, so if he has the opportunity to grow, he will become a force to be reckoned with. After finishing the bread, Reitz thanks Ars once more for his kindness and walks off. But Ars doesn't want to let such a talented person slip away from him, so he follows him until they both end up in a dark alley. Reitz stops him and says it's a bad idea to be following strangers down dark alleys, but Ars cuts him off and asks to make Reitz a retainer. Reitz thinks he's joking, but Ars is being dead serious, so he introduces himself as the son of the Lord, and asks once again for Reitz to join him since he can tell that he is a very talented person. Reitz doesn't believe he could be as talented as Ars says he is, plus he knows it would cause trouble for his family's image if they took in a Malkin like him. Ars says he'll figure something out, but Reitz declines the offer anyway and begins walking off. As he is leaving, Ars begins chasing after him because he may never come across another person as gifted as Reitz again, so to convince him he switches tactics and attempts to bribe him with all the delicious food his family's personal chef can make for him. Ars takes him back to his house, and Reitz is surprised to see that he wasn't joking when he said he was the son of the lord of the land. They head inside, and delicious-looking food is served to Ars. But even the servants here are racist as well, so they only offer Reitz a bowl of beans and tells him that he can't possibly expect to eat decent food when he is a Malkin. They want him to eat his day-old beans and get out of the mansion, but Ars refuses to let such brazen disrespect be thrown at his guest. He makes it clear that Reitz is to be given the same treatment that any other guest would be given, so they all apologize and get him some good food this time. While Reitz is enjoying his meal, Ars asks what he is doing in Summerforth in the first place, so he explains that he was part of a group of mercenaries before, but unfortunately, they were all killed on one of their mission, and since he survived, he has been wandering around aimlessly until he happened to arrive here. That's a touching story, but the butler doesn't care in the slightest and urges Ars to make the filthy Malkin boy leave. Ars tells him that he won't be making Reitz leave anytime soon since he brought him here to have him become his official retainer. The butler thinks that is a preposterous proposal, and there is no way his father would ever give his permission for something like that. And he was right since once Ars told his father of his plans, he flat out denied the idea on the ground that people like Reitz are simply inferior to the people of Summerforth so he must be useless. Even his father is racist, so Ars is going to have to pull some strings to get him to accept Reitz as a retainer. He tells him that he can sense great talent in Reitz, the same as he had done with Milius. However, while Raven trusts his son's ability to identify the talents of people, it is well known among the people of Summerforth that Malkins can never achieve anything good, so there is no way Reitz could have such incredible talent as he says. Ars remains insistent that having Reitz on their side will be indispensable to the future of their domain, so he suggests that Raven gives Reitz a test to confirm the talent he possesses. Raven agrees to test him, and if he passes he can start out as a soldier, but the test he proposes is a duel which Reitz must win if he wants to be approved. Ars is worried since even though Reitz is indeed gifted, his father still has a higher prowess score than him so he won't be able to win a fair fight. Fortunately, Raven is still a decent man, so he's not going to have a serious fight against a 14-year-old. He'll give Reitz a handicap to make things a little more fair to him, and under these conditions, Ars thinks Reitz has a good chance of coming out victorious. Reitz has no objections to this, so Raven says they should proceed with the duel immediately. While they are walking off so Reitz can fight Ars' father, Reitz stops for a moment and asks why Ars is working so just to take someone like him as a retainer. The offer makes him happy, but it honestly seems too good to be true considering he is persecuted wherever he goes because he is a Malkin. Ars assures him that he is only going through all this effort because Reitz is important to him. He will one day become the lord of the land, and when that day comes, he wants to have Reitz by his side, so Reitz promises to do his best to win. They arrive at the practice grounds and everyone is confused about what's going on here. Raven asks for practice swords and an hourglass to be brought to them, and once the equipment is ready, he explains that all Reitz needs to do is land a single blow on him within the time limit to be declared the victor of the match. Ars thinks this might work out in his favor if those are the requirements, since even if Raven is the best swordsman in the land, Reitz's skill should be enough for him to at least land one blow on him. The duel begins so Raven charges at Reitz with full force, and although Reitz managed to dodge, he can tell that even with just a practice sword, if that strike has landed, it would be cleaning the pieces of his body from the floor. Raven is stronger than him, but Reitz is still able to hold his ground against him in the fight. 
The other soldiers are impressed that he is able to keep up with Raven at all since none of them have managed to do so. And that was when he was going easy on them. But right now, Raven is going after Reitz without holding back. At that moment, Reitz gets hit with a strike to the shoulder which sends him bouncing off the floor. He gets back up and looks over to Ars who is rooting for him so he regains his motivation to continue the fight and charges in with a new strategy. He ducks under Raven's first strike and once behind him, he uses the glare of the sun as cover to block Raven's vision and land a strike. Raven still manages to block the strike, but once Reitz steps back to create distance, he announces that this duel is over. Reitz looks back to make sure he hadn't run out of time, but the hard glass still had some sand left in it, meaning Reitz has successfully landed a hit on Raven, even if it was just a light stroke. Everyone is shocked by the feat Reitz has just accomplished and Raven congratulates him on his victory. He admits that Ars was right when he said that Reitz had an amazing talent and after seeing it for himself, he is sure he may become a top-class swordsman in the future. Ars also has a bright future ahead of him if he was able to find such talent so easily. He had been worried about how Ars would handle the chaos in the world right now when the time came, but it looks like he has nothing to fear. Ars may even manage to become the new emperor of the land, but that's a little ambitious for the lord of such a small village. Reitz has also become quite popular among the soldiers, now that they have seen what he can do, and a little while later, Ars goes to see if Reitz has adjusted to his new life here. He is dressed in his new uniform as he has decided to take on servant duties, as well since he wishes to help out as much as possible. He also expresses his immense gratitude to Ars for saving him from a life on the streets, and to repay that debt, he will stand by his side from now on. This was the end of episode 1. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.